Hi, I'm Heather, and today at Spirits Freedom Farm, we are going to make fire tonic or fire cider. Hi, today we are going to make fire tonic or fire cider. That is our what's in the mason jar for this week. I don't know if you guessed right or not, but I hope so. Uh, we are going to make this now. It's it's beginning to feel like fall finally around here. The temperatures are starting to cool off just enough that we can open the windows and let some fresh air in and around the house. But I know pretty soon it's going to be very cold out. Uh, Farmer's Almanac is saying that we're going to have a very cold and very snowy winter, which I do love. But it means that the windows will be closed up and the air will not be fresh uh, as often and we will have more germs being shared around. So we want to find some things to help build our immunity. Uh, fire cider or fire tonic is a folk remedy that people have found helpful. So I'm not a doctor, um, but this we're just talking about folk remedies and uh, things that, that people use. We're not treating or diagnosing or anything here today. So fire tonic, um, we are going to make a recipe today from this book um, called The Herbal Handbook for Homesteaders by Abby Artemisia. I love this book um, for a few reasons. One, I know the author. Uh, she is a very sweet person, which of course is not the best reason to buy a how-to book. Um, it just makes my heart feel warm that I know her and that she's a very nice person. But she is also a degree botanist. She's an herbalist, a mycologist, a farmer, a teacher, a mom, um, so the breadth and de depth of her knowledge is um, makes it well worth listening to what she has to say on these topics. So her recipe for fire tonic in here um, we'll get to in just a minute, but I wanted to show you the book, some of the things that I love about this book. The uh, When I first received it and started flipping through it, one of the first things I noticed was the the uh, table of contents, the chapters are divided up by use. So you can have a lot of herbal books that are out there, they're uh, sorted or divided up by season, which is perfect if you are wanting to go out and find what's available at that time of year. Uh, that's a great way to, to uh, divide it up. But when you have an issue, you want immunity or insect repellent or allergies, and you want to solve that problem, then this is a great book, um, a great way to divide up a book so that you can find those out easily. Um, another thing that I love about this book are the photographs. There are many and they are beautiful and inspiring and so they really stand out and, and make it fun to read this book. Another thing that I love about this book is at the end of each chapter she has a Materia Medica for the plants discussed in that chapter. So a Materia Medica will give you information about the plants. It will tell you um, where you can find it, where does it like to grow, uh, what parts of it are useful, uh, what you can use them for, and how to prepare them to use them. It can tell you which parts not to use. Uh, some plants will have parts, just like our common garden plant, rhubarb. Uh, parts of it are, are good to eat and parts of it are poisonous. So toxic, so we don't want to um, have the wrong parts. So the Materia Medica will tell you that as well. Um, it will also t also tell you about any contraindications. So if you are pregnant or you have kidney issues or heart issues, then there may be some plants that may not be appropriate for you. And uh, contraindications will tell you about that. So these plant uh, Materia Medicas are are perfect for that, as well as um, in her Materia Medica here, she will include um, the uses for children and for animals. So for homesteading mamas, what more could you ask for? It's perfect. Okay, her recipe for the fire tonic here. She also on each of her recipes gives a little bit of background on the recipes. So for the fire cider, fire tonic, she talks about how that was co-created by uh, American herbalist grandmother, uh, Rosemary Gladstar, and that it is uh, basically apple cider vinegar and some spicy vegetables like cayenne and garlic and ginger, maybe some horseradish, turmeric, and 
but there are variations, there are personal variations on that. And it's used for, as I said, uh, people use that to boost their immunity and other issues in the colder months, digestive, anti-inflammatory, decongestant, that sort of thing. So, for this recipe, we uh, her recipe actually makes a gallon. Uh, we're just going to make a quart today. And uh, to do that, we are going to use, she calls for a two inch piece each of fresh turmeric, ginger, and horseradish chopped up. Now I have these pieces that I actually just pulled out of the freezer that I purchased these um, before now. And I just take those uh, and freeze up any extra that I have. And um, you can uh, grate these if you like when you want to use them for a recipe or just thaw them. Um, if you decide to grate them, for example, for this recipe, when we go to strain it, you may need a, a finer strain. But this is uh, the ginger. That was turmeric. So we're just going to chop these up. The more surface area you, you have, the more quickly it will infuse in the, uh, the cider vinegar. So a little ginger and a little horseradish here. Now one of the things that she also calls for in her recipe is some fresh burdock fruit, a one inch piece of that. And uh, I don't have any of that available immediately. And I called a couple of places or asked around a couple places about that and they didn't have any either. So again, this is a flexible recipe. It's certainly worth making if you do not have burdock available or if you don't have turmeric available or something like that. It's still worthwhile. You can use dry herbs, the fresher a little bit better, but you can still use dry herbs. Uh, her recipe also calls for four large garlic cloves, so since I'm making a fourth of that, I would use one, but mine are small. So I'm just going to use a couple of smaller ones here and uh, chop those up a little bit so we can get a little more surface area. And last but not least, some cayenne peppers. We've got, these are ones that um, we grew last year and dried. Um, you can use fresh, but I figured I already had these from last year and why not use them? I will chop these also. I saved these for last um, because when you're handling hot peppers, even dry hot peppers, those oils can get on your fingers and you're going to uh, want to wash your hands right away. Uh, and I know that from experience. Um, I have accidentally rubbed my eyes <laughs> while uh, or right after chopping peppers and I regretted it. I won't forget again. So once we have all of our vegetables, whatever you're going to use. Now this one from last year, we included some onion as well as all of these ingredients. We included some onion, some lemon, and some rosemary. Again, it's flexible. You can make it um, what you how you want it to be. You can look up some Materia Medica on a number of herbs and see what kinds of things that you usually face and what might be helpful for you, especially paying attention to those contraindications. So we're going to take this and we're just going to cover it with some raw cider vinegar. We could probably put a little bit more in there. I've got another bottle. Um, I will, I'll probably put about three cups, bring it up to the shoulder of the jar. But then you'll want to take a piece of, of wax paper or parchment paper to cover it and use, because the, the vinegar can um, corrode or rust the lid, so you just want to prevent that with that little bit of wax paper or parchment paper. Now we're going to put this somewhere warm for, uh, her recipe says two to four weeks. I have seen some recipes that say up to even eight weeks. Um, I would just recommend that you start tasting it, as Abby recommends, after a couple of weeks. And once it starts tasting as infused as you like, nice, hot, spicy, and not just like vinegar, um, that will be when it's done. And uh, you can then strain the solids out, and it's ready to go. You can put it in the refrigerator for several months. Uh, or what? one of the things that we have done is we made a large batch last year, and then I froze some of it in ice cube trays and then popped the ice cubes out into a Ziploc bag. And so we had those throughout the months, and we could just have a quart of it in the refrigerator at a time. 
Another thing that we did, that, um, if you are like us and are not made of the safe metal that Abby is, um, we add honey to ours. So for this quart sized jar, we might add a quarter of a cup of honey um, once we get the jar about full and then finish filling that up with just a little honey to help take off some of the bite. Um, and that helps make it a little bit easier to take. You'll take it in small portions, a tablespoon, a teaspoon to a tablespoon a day, um, unless you're feeling sick, maybe a little bit more. But uh, it's, it's wonderful, it's spicy, it'll warm you up inside on a cold day. So there, there we go. Now if you're going to um, uh, strain this, or if you're going to grate your vegetables, you may want to use a, um, a butter muslin to strain it, because you'll have smaller pieces. But if you're just chopping like we did, a mesh strainer should do the job for you. Um, one recommendation that Abby has in her book, which I think is wonderful, um, is to take the solids when you're finished and you can blend those up with just enough of the vinegar to make a nice hot sauce that you can use. Uh, another thing you can do with this uh, fire tonic is to put it over a salad, use it as part of a salad dressing base, and there are a number of other things that you can, you can top um, vegetables, cooked vegetables or rice with it, um, kind of Asian style. But uh, there are a number of things that you can do with that besides just taking a teaspoonful in the morning to warm you up. So here you go. I hope that you try this recipe. Let me know if you've had it, um, if you've ever made it, what kind of ingredients you like to include, or if you think you might try this and, and if it'll help your family. And if you want to find out more about what uh, Abby has to teach, you can find her at the Wander School. And I'll link that in the uh, bottom of the blog post. Thanks. Please visit the blog post linked in the video description below for more information about this video and the supplies used.